Hey everybody, Chris Grandy. I'm going to talk to you today about the, what am I going to call the catch-all trust. And if you've got kids, one of these is very important. And even if you don't have kids, if you have money that wants to go to certain places when you're gone, it's an important idea. So what am I calling the catch-all trust? Now, this is not some cheesy Sunday morning financial show advertisement, the catch-all trust, where, you know, old ladies think this is some kind of special trust. There's no such official thing called the catch-all trust. What it is, is, is just having a trust that receives all of your assets if something were to happen to both you and your spouse. And that's very important if you have kids. So, for example, if you have two life insurance policies, two retirement accounts, a house, some other stuff, and something were to happen to both of you at the same time, uh, what happens to all those assets? And what happens is a lot of times is the beneficiaries, you know, you may have each other as beneficiaries of the retirement accounts. You may have each other as beneficiaries of the life insurance. Um, but once you get past the two of you, you run into some trouble. And this is what I'm talking about. Some kind of, you know, accident where something happened to both of you or both of you, just bad things happen, you know. And so what you may have is, for example, you may have your, your young kids listed as beneficiaries on your 401k and on your life insurance, and then your house just may be in both your names. Here's what happens in those cases, or something like what might happen. With your house, if both of you are gone and you each own the house jointly, it'll then go to your will, or whoever died second, the will. Uh, you don't really want to go through a will, if you can help it, in my opinion. Um, get to that later, or maybe in another video. But just understand that that's not ideal. Second thing, retirement accounts. Um, you know, when you set up an account for children, you know, oftentimes you set up a trust account, right? There's an adult name on the account and the kid's name. So if your half a million dollar 401k is all of a sudden uh, inherited by a nine-year-old, don't you think the same thing is going to apply? They're going to say, okay, where's the custodian? Okay, so if both of you are gone and the kids are the secondary beneficiaries and each of you has half a million, now the kids... Um, have a million dollars in their name, but they're too young to really make decisions with it. So what do they do? I gotta think about it. Um, third, um, you know, you have, um, and by the way, that's an exception. Um, we'll get to this in a second, but that's an exception area for the new Secure Act inherited IRA rules, our uh, minor children. But so you get that, and you may have life insurance policies. You get a million dollar life insurance policy on on or on you and your spouse. So let's say you have a million dollar life insurance policy on each of you. You have half a million dollars of retirement accounts. So that's three million dollars of total assets. And you own a house, let's say with half a million of equity. Three and a half million dollars. Your two kids inherit all that. Now the state says they really can't control that money. You know, custody laws, etc. So if you haven't appointed a financial custodian, someone else will. So therefore, if you haven't done a trust, you haven't appointed a trustee, you don't have things set up where if something happens to both of you, the money funnels to this trust as a secondary location. Now all of a sudden, people you may not want or you have no control of because you're dead are going to decide who takes care of the money that takes care of your kids. And in that case, who, you don't know if they're going to spend the money correctly, Right. Are there any, you, you'd have to set up a trust to put some governors on that. Hey, you know, uh, we, we uh, no more than X amount of dollars for kids. I mean, I've seen parents blow through inheritance money for their kids because the trusts have no... Now, what do you think a non-parent is going to do? So there's no governor on how that money gets spent for your kids. So what to consider is working with a comprehensive financial planning team. Now, I really want to point that out because this is stuff that involves... Estate planning, which was going to require an attorney or somebody who's really skilled in legal stuff because you're going to be drafting a trust and executing a trust in this situation. You know, the tax consequences, you want a tax team, you want your ta a tax portion of your team, and then planning. You want somebody that's done this and knows the nuances. You want somebody that knows the SECURE Act has an exception for, for, um, for, for, uh, for minor children. So in this case... And again, remember now, you, you do planning year by year. So you're going to set the trust up for how it is right now, not for when your kids are 20. That's the whole idea of reviewing everything every year because as your kids grow up and stuff, you may not want to keep it this way. But right now, while your two kids are 9 and 8 or 10 and 11 or 10 and 6 or whatever, this is what you want to, this is what you want to consider doing, in my opinion, okay? Is you want to have, 
you want to have a trust that catches all these assets, you know, the right way. You don't want tax consequences, et cetera, but you want to catch all these assets the right way. You know, as far as the house goes, maybe you want that disposed and liquid, you want it liquidated and you want the money to go to the benefit of the kids. Maybe you want the house to stay. You want the kids to be able to stay in there and you've worked out ahead of time with, with your chosen, you know, custodian for the kids that they you know. Maybe it's your single sister and she would move into the house and take care of your kids and she'd be able to afford it because you just left three and a half million dollars in a trust for her to handle the kids. So you want to do this ahead of time, you know? So you would have the, the trust and take all the money would funnel to the trust if both of you are gone. So the primary beneficiaries, each of you are dead in this assumption. It's going to funnel to that trust. And then you're going to have some restrictions on that. This much goes to education. Can't touch this. You know, if it's someone, if the trustee is somebody that you are very confident in, you could leave a lot of discretion in that situation. But maybe a lot of people I've talked to don't have somebody they trust that much. So you want to leave maybe less discretion or a little, or you want to have two people watching, maybe your attorney, you know, if it's three and a half million dollar trust, is it unreasonable to pay the attorney 1500 bucks a year just to oversee occasional decisions, major decisions made by the, the family trustee? So you want to have two trustees, let's say it's your sister and the attorney. The attorney is maybe the backup or the kind of professional eye, and your sister is the, is the caring family eye, the one that knows what the kids need, et cetera. But the attorney's just there in case your sister marries some weird guy who tries to, you know, angle in on things. Then you can bring the heavy in. So you got to, again, angles, right? So you maybe have two trustees. And so in this situation, the money funnels in there and you have, they can make decisions. There may or may not be governors on this fund, but at least it's all cohesive. You decided ahead of time, this is the person taking care of my kids. Here's where the money's going. Here's how it's going to be. And it's all organized. So that to me is what, you know, what this kind of catch all trust is. It's really just a revocable trust that is going to catch and control most of the assets that would, would fall, you know, to the kids after both of you are gone so that it could be managed the best way you possibly can with the best decisions you can make while you're alive and, you know, that you can estimate you'll need to make you know, for if, if that rare chance that both of you pass away while the kids are young happens. So just a thought there, very important to think about. A lot of people, most people don't have something like this. Most people have their kids as beneficiaries of big accounts. They don't have a trust to catch all. They don't have a trusted person. They don't have limited, they haven't thought about what what power to, to limit to the kids. I mean, to the, uh, to the um, custodial adult. So you haven't thought of these things, very important planning stuff. And then once, and it needs to be thought about. And then once it's in place, you need to review it every year as the kids get older and such, all right? Hope you guys found this helpful. And if you like this video, please click like, subscribe. Um, and you know you know, I got a series of different kinds of stuff going on. I've got entrepreneur inter interview series. I've lined up a few people, two more people I'm working on, um, which I think will be pretty interesting. One's a nonprofit um, person. So you want know, to get different angles here. We, uh, you know, I have other financial education videos and I have my Quora, Quora answers question, which this video would probably apply at some point too. So uh, make sure you, you subscribe and, and, and join our little tiny community. It's a lot of fun to, uh, to give, you this, give you these ideas and hope you're enjoying it. Any questions also, drop them down below or send me a contact, playwithchris.com. Have a great day.